Hi everyone, welcome to lesson 5 of the Twilight Dreaming Quilt. In block 5 we're going to do a Dresden plate style flower. We're going to give you the choice of doing plain wedges or a checkerboard wedge. We're also going to um, do our cute little bee here and we're going to do um, some satin stitch stripes on him and we're going to stitch in some wing detail. So there's lots to learn in today's lesson. I hope you really enjoy it. So let's get going. To begin block five, just in the same way as we have done in the previous weeks, print out your pattern sheets, tape them together, trace the design onto your 18 inch background square, and then prepare all of your applique shapes. You can iron your applique shapes on, but just before you iron the bee's body um, or the tail there and the wings on, just position them over the top of the pattern there and just with the right side of your fabric facing up, trace in the extra detail lines. So we've got some lines on the wings there and then we're also going to have some stripes on the bee's body. These are our two different Dresden flower options here. So here's our one with the plain wedges and then this one here we've done the checkerboard effect. So you can see lots of piecing in there. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's not as difficult as what it seems. But the first one is our plain wedges. So on your pattern sheet, you will have a wedge shape pattern piece like this. And using your leftover template plastic, just trace um, a template. So all you're going to do basically is just, you know, using a little corner there, just sit that on, trace around that. So I like to use some, a 2B lead pencil or even a 4B lead pencil. Trace that out. Just make sure that you trace in the grain line so we've got a grain going one way or a grain going across and I'll just explain that to you in a minute. So I've traced that out and I've cut it out and that's my template piece there. To cut out these wedge pieces we've used three different fabrics so we've got um, a pink which is on the, in the center and on the outer edges and then we've got our two other colors on either side there. All I did to cut these out was just using my piece of fabric there I just place the template shape on. When you are making your template um, just try to be as accurate as possible. Um, we're going to have lots of seams in there so keeping it accurate is going to um, make it all go together nicely. Now you've got your grain line here so the one that runs down like that that's the grain line that you want to line up with the Selby jet so that's our down ways grain. You might have a piece of fabric where you, you know, you want to save a little bit. So I put the other grain in just to show that if you did want to, you could actually place it um, in the other direction. But the best idea would be to make sure that all of your wedge pieces are traced out on the same grain line. So all I'm doing is just popping that on like that. I'm using my fabric marker and I'm just going to trace around the edge. that. If you're using a lead pencil, make sure you're using a sharp lead pencil because if your lead pencil is blunt, it's going to give you a thicker line. And also when you're tracing a template, angle your pencil or your marker in towards the edge of the shape. So, you know, you don't, you just want to avoid your shape getting bigger as you mark it out. So I've got one marked on there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn it around like that. So I'm going to have one wedge with a narrow edge and then I'm putting another one and then I've got my wide edge there and I can actually line it up on that same line. To cut this out, you can either, once you've got it marked on, you can either cut that out with some nice sharp scissors or you can cut that out with your rotary cutter ruler and your cutting mat. I don't recommend um, using a template, a thin piece of template plastic like this and then cutting with your rotary cutter because it could, your rotary cutter could easily jump that template plastic and cut your finger. So they're very sharp rotary cutters are, as we all know. <laughs> um, okay, so there's two pieces. When I'm cutting out my other pieces with my other ones on here, so I'm just doing a purple, two purples, and I'm gonna do two yellows, I've already got those cut out, and then three for the pink. And I'm just going to quickly cut this out using my scissors. So 
So I've got all of my wedge shape pieces cut out and now the next step is we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew, show you how we sew these nice little points at the top edge of our wedges. So at the sewing machine I've got my quarter inch foot on, I have my size 70 universal needle on and I've got a neutral coloured thread and a stitch length of two. I've got the small stitch length on again because that way we don't have to do any reversing to tie off. Um, a smaller stitch length um, isn't going to tend to come undone. So what we're going to do with our wedge shape pieces, I've got the right side facing up at the moment and I'm just going to fold it in half lengthwise and we're going to sew across the wider edge. So I'm folding that in half like that. So that's right sides together. And then I'm just going to pop that under the foot when I start to sew, um, even if I've got um, a machine with thread cutters because thread cutters cut the thread quite short, I always like to just start with some longer threads there just to help pull it through. So I'm stitching a quarter inch across the top edge. So taking each one right sides together and stitching. And notice that I didn't cut my thread. So that's called chaining. So for any of you um, quilters that are new, that's what we call chain piecing. So I'm just folding that over like that and um, my foot's ra raised slightly so I'm just sort of putting it level with the needle and away we go like that. It's only a couple of stitches off the edge. Sometimes when you're sewing with batik fabrics it's hard to tell what is the right and wrong side but um, it is right sides together. Okay, so we've got all those sewn together in a little chain like that and now I'm just going to get my scissors and cut those apart. Next step is to cut across the corner. So the corner that we're cutting across, that is our one that's got the folded edge. So I'm just cutting across like that. Don't cut all the way down to the stitching line. So I've just cut a little bit away from that stitching line there. So I'm going to do that to all of them now. is to turn the points through and just a little bit of a tip just press it in half like that I'm just pressing a crease now that crease is only coming down by about an inch and a half or say four centimeters when I go to turn that through I like to push the seam down to one side and turn it through and then you're going to need something to push those points through this is a little gadget um, here um, what is the point turner I've had this for years this will only set you back a couple of dollars if you're in a sewing shop. Um, you should grab one, I use it for everything. So I've just pushed that through a little bit more. You might want to use scissors or um, just something that's not too sharp. We don't want to poke a hole through the end of it. And then what we're going to do is, the reason why I like to do that crease is because it's really important to press um, this so that it's that seam is centered. Because see, say for instance, you know, if you didn't press it, um, without that seam in the center your shape is going to be a little bit off so lining that seam up with the crease that we just gently press there and then we're just pressing like that so that is how we get those lovely little points at the top of our wedges there so I'm just going to continue turning all of these through and then I'll show you um, how we sew them together so once again little press at the top there like that holding the seam flat pushing through, using something to poke those ends out with and when I go to press that I'm lining that seam up there with my crease. So back at the sewing machine we're going to join our wedge shaped pieces together. So I've got them laid out how I want them to be together and we've got our seven pieces there but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sew them in pairs so I'm going to put them right sides together and I like to start from the top that way I can make sure that my pieces my wedges are going to be nice and level at that top edge there if you're a beginner you might want to pin it together if you're more experienced you can just start sewing 
So once again I like to start with my threads a little bit longer and just help that through like that so we don't have anything jamming up when we first start to sew. And sewing together with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to do the chain piecing again. One of the reasons why I mentioned cutting them all on the same grain line, that way you won't have one wedge that is stretchy and the other one that is solid. So I've got my wedges sewn together in pairs and I've pressed the seams open and now I'm just going to continue sewing again. To finish off, sew the final seam together and press the seam open. So here's my completed Dresden flower. You can see on the back all of the seams are pressed open. But I just thought I'd tell you something a little bit interesting about this shape that I've done. I've actually used my 10 degree, um, my 10 degree wedge shape ruler. And you can see I've made my template using the bottom edge of this. So this being 10 degrees, to make a full circle, you would actually need 36 of these. So if you have a look on the board here, I've got this one um, here lined up on a line and we've got seven. So if you actually did another two wedges, that would actually give you a quarter of a circle. So it just depends on the degree of the wedge that you're using as to how many different wedge pieces you would use to make um, a full Dresden plate circle. So that's our plain one there. To do our pieced one, what I did with this one here was I sewed the strips together. So in the requirements list it said um, choose two colours and you're going to cut three strips from each one and those strips are an inch and a half wide by 16 inches long. So that's enough to give you a shape like that one there. The way that you would do this one, once you've got it seamed together, the most important thing with this is that you always press towards the darkest colour or if you're using two colours that are the same shape, choose the colour that you want to press towards. So in this case here I'm pressing my seams towards the purple all of the time and that's going to make a really big difference when we sew these together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut our wedge shape pieces out. There's two ways that you can do this. So one way is you can use your wedge template that you've made. Now, um, just an important fact is that the size of this is actually six and a half inches. So when you sew your inch and a half strips together, you really want that to come out at um, six and a half inches wide. So our template's going to fit on quite nicely there. So always making sure that your seams are pressed out as much as you know they can be, but gent gently pressing of course. So what you would do is, if you're using the template, mark it first of all. So just bringing it along the edge there like that. And marking there. And then marking like that. Your next one, you'll turn around so that we've got a narrow one on the edge and now we're gonna have our wider one. And then you would mark again like that. 
um, if you've got one of these wedge rulers, you can actually use your ruler. So once again, I do recommend not using your template and cutting with the rotary cutter. As I said, the template plastic's too thin, you could easily cut a finger. But if you did happen to have one of these 10 degree wedge shaped rulers, that makes it really easy. So the way that you would do that is I'm just going to use my ruler there like that. If you do have one of these rulers, interestingly enough, the numbers look a little bit odd, but it actually starts with a quarter of an inch on the edge there. So you've got an inch and a quarter and that seam lines up there. And then that looks as though it finishes on um, like nine and a quarter, but it is actually six and a half inches wide. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to turn around there so I can finish cutting this edge. You can imagine it would make a really large circle if you were to use the full size of this wedge shape. Okay, so now I'm going to cut one this way. Make sure everything's nice and lined up. and spinning the ruler and cutting one back the other way. Always making sure that each time you do this, that your lines are lined up as best as possible. I always like to say that when we're working with fabric, we're not working with wood, we're working with fabric and it does tend to want to move a lot and flipping it backwards. So this is what you would do, just only if you happen to have a wedge shape ruler. And a 10 degree wedge shape ruler. Otherwise you'd be using your template and you'd be marking it. Mark it all the way along, one up, one down. And then cutting out with your rotary cutter. So just sew the points in the same way that you did with the last Dresden flower. I've got all of the points turned through on my wedge shaped pieces here but there's just one little tip that I want to show you on any of your pieces where you've got the seam facing up at the top edge before you turn it through just clip that seam away on an angle like that and then the same thing on the other side the reason for that is that when we turn this through we do end up um, our seam facing up so that's just going to reduce the bulk out of the, um, the folded edge of the wedge like that okay so now we're going to sew them together so I've got all of my pieces lined up ready to sew now when we cut these pieces out we actually cut them out with um, the wedge we had one wedge going up and then we flipped it around and cut it the opposite way so what that has now given us is the checkerboard effect so you can see here I've got the pink um, point and then I've got a purple point and then that's what we're alternating with through with our seven wedge shaped pieces. So here's the fun part starting to sew them together. When we put two pieces right sides together we're going to start from the top sewing down and because all of our seams were pressed towards the purple when we go to sew them together the seams are going to be going in opposite directions so that's going to make it quite easy for them just to link together. If you did want to pin them together you could but you'll find that it's actually quite easy to not pin them together. So when you're sewing your wedges together you've got the edges lined up at the top so they're nice and level and I like to have my long threads to begin with just to help pull that through because that is going to be a little bit bulky there. We do have quite a few layers happening at the moment. And then as we're sewing along you can see where my seams are going in opposite directions and I'm just easing those pieces in together. So I come along, there's my next seam and see seam, seam and that's linking in nicely together. Same thing again. And once again linking in again so sometimes you might find that um, even if they're not lining up um, like for instance this one here I need to push the purple one a little bit forward and then bring my other piece over the top so that those seams link in 
and then sewing. I am going to make sure that each time I'm finishing with long threads just to help pull those wedges through to begin with. And then there's two pieces sewn together. There seems aren't too bad. They're not always perfect, but it's not too bad. I think that there's so many seams there that if something's not lining up exactly, it's not going to be too bad. So once again, we're going to sew all the wedge shaped pieces together in pairs, pressing our seams open and then joining the pairs together to make the complete um, flower shape. I'll sew one more um, wedge together so that you can see. So once again, right sides together, linking in those seams, bringing it up to the foot, hanging on to my threads from behind. I'm just going to, on my sewing machine, put the pivot function on. It just helps a little bit. A couple of stitches there, and away we go. Lifting my two wedges apart just so that I can see what's happening there. One seam and the other seam, linking those in. And this one here again, I need to push one forward and ease the top one. Just to get those seams linking in. See how we went that time. Quite good. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I've got my wedges sewn together. Um, I've got my three pairs and then there's my extra one there. Seams are pressed open. So I'm just going to continue joining those together to make the full Dresden um, flower shape. Now don't worry too much if the bottom edges of your wedges aren't perfect because that's why we've got this little piece here which is our stem. Um, that's going to cover any of our raw edges at the bottom of the flower. For those of you that would like to pin, a good way to do the pinning is to line your seams up so you can see one going one way, one going the other way. When you pop your pins in, you put a pin and it goes in through the stitching line and make it come out through the stitching line on the other side and in again on that side there making sure that your stitching lines are nice and lined up. The other thing that's quite useful is the um, fork pins. So if you know what fork pins are, I don't actually have any here at the moment, but um, it's like a double pronged pin and they're quite good for when you're trying to um, sew seams together accurately. So that's how you would do that. You would pin them all together and then that way if there was any easing that had to be done, then they would get eased together as you sew like that. Um, if you are going to sew them together like that, uh, not a good idea to have a quarter inch foot on with a guide. You might want to um, change your foot and have a quarter inch foot without a guide when you sew that. This is my Dresden checkerboard flower complete and you'll be able to see here we've actually got a couple of different versions now but it does show that if you wanted to use this wedge shape piece here and make a full circle you just need to have 36 wedges and what you would do is you need nine to make a quarter. We've only got seven there, but it's nine to make a quarter. So you'd sew them all together in quarters and then you would sew the quarters together and then you would sew them in half. One thing to keep in mind though, because you're sewing so many seams, it can be, um, you will need to do a little bit of adjusting. So if it's not sitting as, as a flat circle, you'll just need to come back and sew some of the seams in a little bit. So we have decided to go with our, um, just our plain wedges. Um, that was our first flower that we did. So we still like this one. 
So the next step is um, to put the flower on. So as you can see with the block here, I have done all of my satin stitching everywhere. Um, I just haven't got the bottom of the flower and the leaves on. And the reason for that is that we're going to line our Dresden flower up. We're going to have a center line on the pattern. So just lining that up in the center like that. And then what I'll get you to do is just press the seam or the side edge of the Dresden over. So I'll just flip that over so you can see what's happening there. So you can just press that over by eye um, or you can mark it. So it is a quarter of an inch or six millimeters that we're pressing the edge over. I'll just show on this one here, same thing. Even though we've got the seams there, you can still get in and press those edges over like that. So I've got my edges pressed over and then I'm just positioning it onto the block like that. And I just want to make sure that it's going to fit in okay. So here's my piece that goes at the bottom and just pop that on and just have a double check and make sure that everything's fitting in okay. We did design it so that the bottom here of the green piece or the top of the green piece is a little bit wider and we did that just to make sure that your flower is going to fit in okay. If you wanted to trim that back um, exactly you can do that if you want to. If your piece has turned out um, a little bit too big, your Dresden piece, what you can do is just press the edge over a little bit further. So once we have that positioned, pin it in place and we're going to head to the sewing machine to stitch it in place. At the sewing machine you can see how I have my Dresden flower pinned in place and ready to sew. This time I'm going to sew just in the same way we did in block two around the edge of the bias um, which went around the edge of the moon. So we used, um, I recommended either just a small zigzag stitch or you could do a blanket stitch. If you do want to do a small zigzag stitch I recommend um, a width of 1.5 and a length of 1.5. We don't actually want this to stand out, it's just a stitch to hold it in place. So once again I have my size 75 machine embroidery needle or just a normal size 75 needle and then I've got, um, I'm using a peach coloured thread because I find that that just blends in with all of my colours here and um, my open toe foot on. So, And I like to use this little um, pointed tool here, a tailor's awl or a stiletto, it just helps to hold things nice and in place. So you can see one in, one out, one in, one out, just like that all the way around. So there's our Dresden flower stitched on. As I said, you can use a zigzag or you can use a blanket stitch. If you wanted to, you could even sew that on by hand. Now the next step is to iron our bottom flower piece on like that, making sure that it's covering up all of the raw edges. So iron that on and then iron the leaves in place. And then you would continue just doing your applique, your favorite method 
around the edge of those pieces there like that. But what we're going to do is next step is I'm going to show you how we're going to stitch the satin stitch stripes onto our V. So they're going to get done next. The lines that are done on the wings, they're going to get done um, as part of the quilting process. So I'll just get threaded up for that and then I'll show you what to do. So I'm at my machine and I'm all set up to do my satin stitch. So this is a decorative um, stitch. Some of you with your machines, it may already be pre-programmed in as a satin stitch. Um, if you don't have that, it's just a zigzag, a width of three is what I'm using. And um, you bring your length all the way down to about um, 0 0.3 or maybe 0.2. So just have a little bit of a play. So I've been having a play here and I'm just trying to um, get it so that it looks nice and close together like that. Practice on a piece um, of fabric where you've got a double layer and a piece of tear away or tissue paper underneath. So it is important to stabilize your work when you are doing a satin stitch. And because it's wide, you don't want it to kind of um, pucker it up in the middle. And the other thing you want to do is loosen off your top tension. So take your tension to three or um, even lower than three. And I'll just show you the back of my work there. You just want to be able to see a little bit of that top stitch on the underneath so therefore you know that you're making a really nice thick full stitch. So when we're going to do our satin stitching on the B to make the stripes, definitely as I said before a piece of tear away or um, some tissue paper underneath to stabilise. And I'm just going to stitch on one of my marked lines here. So um, we've um, got our lines marked on there like that and I'm going to use that line as a center line so I'm just going to lower my foot and I've already satin stitched around the edge so basically what I want to do is I want to line up my stripe um, just inside my satin stitch I don't actually want to stitch over the edge of it just in case it's a little bit bulky and then because this is on a little bit of an angle I'm actually going to just sort of shift a little bit there so that when I do my first stitch it's kind of coming down in the same angle. I just had a little bit of bobbin thread come to the top there so to fix that up if I can grab my thread underneath which I just did then so that should be good. We'll see how we go now. There we are and now I'm just going to sort of gradually turn my work so it's in the right direction. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to stitch over that line, making sure that that line's in the center. When you feel like you need to turn, just make sure that, um, this is kind of like what I call an outside curve, so I'm just stopping with my needle on the outside edge. We might get a few little gaps in there, but that's okay. If you look um, at a B um, up, nice and close you'll see that they are kind of like shaggy lines that they've got on their body. So don't forget if you do have the bobbin thread coming to the top make sure that you um, reduce your top tension. to stop maybe one more stitch there there we are so just stopping before the edge of my um, little zigzag flipping over to the back and pulling on my bobbin thread and bringing my top thread through so I can tie that off the most important thing with satin stitch is to make sure that you don't push your work through. Sometimes you might be tempted to do that because it is actually moving through the machine at quite a slow pace. But if you push your work, you will find that it's going to leave gaps. So you've just got to let the machine take it through at its own pace. So once again showing here, when I start, I'm actually starting level with the edge of the B, just level with the satin stitch there and then I start stitching and then I want to start following that line. So every time I stop and pivot I've got my needle 
on the left side there. As I come around the curve, this time I'm going to stop with my needle on the right hand side. Back at the machine, I have my B stitched with his stripes. I've pulled the threads to the back and I've tied them off and I've removed the tear away and I've finished stitching all of the applique. So next step is to, just like we usually do every week, so make our quilt sandwich with our three layers and safety pin them together. First of all, you're going to do your outline quilting around the edge of all of your shapes. And then you're going to do the echo quilting. I'm jumping ahead a little bit here because I just want to show you how we're going to stitch the detail on the bee's wings. So as usual, if you don't want to do that free motion, you would just attach your walking foot and straight stitch those lines. But I'm just going to show you how I would do that um, using my free motion foot. I've already started on this side here and we're going to go over to this side. So I'm using a grey coloured thread to do my wing detail and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this point here so at the top of the wing I'm just going to drop my foot bring my bobbin thread up to the top just using my tweezers there a couple of stitches trimming those threads away and I'm just going to show you how I would do this. finishing about there. You can see that my um, detail is quite sketchy there. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly sewn on top of each other. So to finish off this block now um, I'm going to stitch in the, um, the legs and um, the antenna. You can do that free motion or once again straight stitch with your walking foot. I've got to finish off the echo quilting so I've still got a little bit more to do. So I'm going to finish off there um, and you'll get to see all the quilting detail on the pattern cover. So that's the end of um, our lesson for block five. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, we've got some really exciting things happening for you next week so um, please enjoy.